Good, Glenn. And I've seen pictures of former U.S. President Jimmy Carter working at a Habitat build site. Did he start the organization there? What are the principles of Habitat? No, a couple by the name of Linda and Millard Fuller at America's Georgia started Habitat for Humanity in 1976. The Fullers and some of their friends started a non-profit ecumenical Christian housing ministry. And since that start in 1976, Habitat International across the world have built a half a million modest, affordable houses. These houses have provided homes for decent, of, of decent and safe housing for over 2.5 million people so far. Millard Fuller developed the concept called the Theology of the Hammer to set aside our differences, work in partnerships with one another to help our neighbors. We use a simple tool such as the hammer to create great things. Habitat works under the concept of giving a hand up and not a hand out to help families gain ownership of their own home and stabilize the cost of housing for the family. By having simple, decent housing, many families are able to break the cycle of poverty and move to a higher economic level in our society. However, Jimmy Carter and his wife, Rosalind, have helped on house bills every year since 1984 and have greatly raised the profile of Habitat. This year, the Jimmy Carter Guild is in Haiti in November, so if you want to join the project, I think there's still room. And I read uh, somewhere that uh, uh, Miller Fuller just passed away this last spring and was still at the same uh, Baptist church in America where he started this project. Now, does that mean that a U.S. organization is actually building the house in Clinton? No, each country where Habitat operates creates its own national organization. Habitat Canada was created in 1985, and the first home in Canada was built in Winkler, Manitoba that year. Since 1985, there have been 72 affiliates created across Canada. The most recent was in Northwest Territories. In total, over 2,000 homes now have been built by Habitat affiliates in Canada. Each affiliate, such as Habitat for Humanity here in County, has a board of directors, a number of committees, and some paid staff. The board and committee members are volunteers who oversee the activities of the affiliate and are responsible for selecting the partner families, raising money to build the homes, providing support to the partner families over the life of the partnership, and administrating the mortgages with the partner family. It takes many volunteers who believe in the mission of Habitat to keep the idea alive. <laughs> you mentioned that there's an affiliate in Huron County. Um, how did that get started? In 2003, a minister by the name, a pastor by the name of Fred Dark, came to the Hensley United Church to serve as a lay minister. Fred had been a founding member of the Toronto affiliate and brought a great deal of enthusiasm about <laughs> Habitat to his ministry. A group within the congregation started meeting after church in the fall of 2003 to explore the possibility of creating a Habitat affiliate in Huron County. Now some of you may remember there was an attempt to create a Habitat affiliate back in about 1994-95. I remember the ads in the Clinton paper advertising for people to come up, but there just wasn't at that time enough interest in it. But in January of 2004, a meeting was held in, at the Hensley United Church with over 90 people in attendance, so there was interest. And from that meeting, there was a committee of interested people who were formed to, to uh, go into the process of, of looking to see what needed to be done. Many policies and procedures had to be created to provide guidance for the board of directors for Habitat for Humanity. Huron County before it could be affiliated and accepted by head office. So the affiliate was incorporated in 2005 and, from, and moved forward from there. But we owe a great deal of thanks to Fred Dark and the initial steering committee for all the hard work they did before the first nail was ever hammered in the house. So the affiliate started in 2005. Is this the first house that the Huron affiliate has built? No, this will be the second house that we built in Clinton. In 2005, the first house was built by the new affiliate in Clinton. The municipality of Central Huron gave the affiliate a residential lot on Number 8 Highway, and that gift was the catalyst that got that first house building project going. The 
first house was completed in the fall of 2005 and the partner family purchased that house and moved into the house in early December. The board of directors of the day created a strategic plan to set a goal that each, uh, to build a house in each of the major towns in Huron County at the rate of one house per year. So in 2006, a house was built in Wingham. In 2007, the affiliate was given a lot in Hensel by the Hensel and Area Kinsman Club, so they built a house in, in uh, built a home in Hensel. Built a house in Godrich in 2008, in Exeter in 2009, Seaforth in 2010, and Brussels in 2011. So this year we're coming back to Clinton to build the eighth house, and next year we'll be building the second house in Godrich. Including the current partner family, there are eight families, including 20 children, who are in stable, affordable housing, which they own. We are working towards our mission of eliminating poverty housing in Huron County, but we have a long way to go. I certainly remember the house bill in Exeter. I was chair of that building. My wife would tell you that she didn't see much of me for four months. Okay, Glenn, you mentioned the concept of a hand up, not a hand out. Now, how is uh, the hand out when you give a family a house? Well, Arnold, we don't give the house to the family. The family buys the home from Habitat at a price that is fair market value. Habitat hires a real estate appraiser to determine that fair price uh, when the home is completed. The family gets the hand up by not having to come up with a down payment on the house and Habitat does not charge interest on the mortgage that Habitat holds in this house. However, there is a mortgage on 100% of the value of the house that must be repaid with monthly payments. Remember I said that this family selected it to be a partner with Habitat on the project. Can Revenue Agent agency requires that the partner family must complete 500 hours of sweat equity by donating time to help build either their house, another house by Habitat, or do other things for the affiliate. Now some of these other things could be working in our restores or helping with the administrative tasks of the affiliate. These sweat equity hours are carefully logged and signed off by a supervisor to verify that the work is done. The family cannot gain ownership of the house until those 500 hours of sweat equity have been completed. Jim's skill in construction has been a great help on this project. Melissa has been busy painting the walls and trim, while Melissa's brother Joe has assisted in numerous times since we got the house framed. This is not a handout in this process. Melissa and Jim have greatly exceeded their 500 hour requirement and can be proud of their contribution to their home. Uh, you mentioned that the houses are sold to the partner family at fair market value, and that Habitat takes back an interest-free mortgage. How do we determine the monthly repayment schedule, and what does Habitat do with that uh, income? Each year in June, after the income tax return <coughs> to the partner family have been filed, a member of the family partner committee sits down with the partner family and reviews the income of the adult family members. The formula is that 30% of the total income earned by the adult members will go to pay three things. The insurance on the house, the property taxes on the house, and the remainder goes to the repayment of the mortgage. This means that mortgage payments will be adjusted upwards if the income of the family improves, We've had mortgages that have started out as 30-year mortgages that will be repaid earlier because the income of the family has improved. And we also have mortgages that have been extended out. If we have a situation where a family member becomes ill or goes back to school or has a decrease in the amount of income that they're, using, or they're earning, then the mortgage will go down. <coughs> the repayment schedule, therefore, is flexible and determined each year. When Habitat receives that money from the mortgage payments, the board must use this money to fund new house building. So this year, we're going to receive approximately $32,000 in mortgage payments, and that money will be going towards future home builds. So I'm hoping as we build more and more houses that maybe by 2014, we can actually start to build two houses a year. And this just starts to multiply. The more money you have coming in, the more money you're able to put towards house building. You mentioned that the family, uh, to earn their 500 sweat equity hours, could work in a restore. 
Uh, what, what's a restore? Tell us about that. Huron County has two restores now, uh, one in Godrich at 120 Hawkins Street and one on Main Street in Exeter. And this restore concept is a Canadian concept. It started in Winnipeg in 1995 and it has since spread all across North America. And the purpose of the stores is to sell donated new and used building materials, furniture, household appliances, and other items at reduced prices. The surplus income income earned over and above our expenses. It goes towards, first of all, covering our administration costs, and then secondly, towards supporting house building projects. So what this does is allow 100 cents in the dollar when somebody donates us money to go straight towards house building. And we're pretty proud of that being something that we can do. In 2011, the restores across Canada generated $10 million that went towards covering administrative costs as well as house building. <coughs> Excuse me, so it's not small money, and in the United States, the number is about 35 million. As well, these stores are diverting stuff away from the landfill, so we are very helpful towards the environment on this, and it really helps people get stuff that they need at a much reduced price without surplus income coming to help us. It appears, from what you can tell us, that Habitat uh, is a charitable organization that really delivers benefits to people who need a hand up. I st I'm starting to like this idea of a hand up, not a hand out. Uh, what could I do to help? Well, Arnold, we always need cash donations to purchase lumber and fixture for our homes that we cannot get donated from suppliers. This year, we've had great support from local tradesmen and businesses in Clinton, but we still need to raise about 75000 in cash for each house that we build. We're having a country hoedown in Zurich on October the 6th, which is a major fundraising event for the Clinton House build. You could sell some tickets for our party, and that would help raise money for that project. The house build next year in Godrich, and it has been de designated a women's bill. Pause. <laughs> um, this is the first time, first women's build for here in County, and we think it's going to be a great success. The, uh, as the build committee meeting last week, they had one on, uh, on September the 11th, they had over 45 interested people to help with this build. So we think this thing's off to a great start. The house build is going to require some male helpers, but we're aiming to involve as many women in the construction of the home. On the build site, we also need non-construction help, such as a site clerk to record the volunteers who worked on the site. We need a photographer to take pictures each day that we're working on the site. When we get done, we give the family a photo diary of the build. Also, we need volunteers to help with committees and be directors on the board. And last but not least, to feed everybody. Because when you're a volunteer working on a habitat site in your county, you get fed at noon time. And there were some days where we had 15 people on the site, so feeding us was a, was a major thing. So, anyway, I've been told that you and Isla can do a lot of your own home improvements, so perhaps you can persuade her <laughs> to help with some parts of this house building. We need a supervisor for the installation of the windows, doors, and siding on the house, as well as interior work. So many hands make light work on a building project, and there's a job for every skill set. However, Arnold, one of the easiest and most powerful things you can do is pray that Habitat's goal of eliminating poverty housing in Huron County will be really realized. Perhaps you could say a prayer for us now. I'm going to uh, <clears throat> use a prayer for Marion Wright Eidelman. Marion Wright Eidelman was a single black mother uh, living in New York City and became part of the Habitat process through Jimmy Carter. She was a consultant to Jimmy Carter when he was president and she's become quite famous as a result. And her prayer was this. We pray for children who sneak popsicles before supper, who erase holes in math workbooks, who can never find their shoes. And we pray for those who stare at, photo at photo photographers from through barbed wire, who can't bound down the street in a new pair of sneakers, who will never play tag, who are born in places we wouldn't be caught dead, who never go to the circus, who live in an X-rated world. We pray for children who bring us sticky kisses and fistfuls of dandelions, 
who hug us in a hurry and forget their lunch money, but we pray for those who never get dessert, <clears throat> who have no safe blanket to drag behind them, who watch their parents die, who can't find any bread to steal, who don't have any rooms to clean up, whose pictures aren't on anybody's dressers, whose monsters are real. We pray for children who spend all their allowance before Tuesday, who throw tantrums in the grocery store, who pick up their food, who like ghost stories, who shove dirty clothes onto the bed and never rinse out the tub, who get visits from tooth fairies, who don't like to be kissed in front of relatives, <clears throat> who squirm in church and scream on the phone, whose tears we often laugh at and whose smiles can make us cry. But we pray for those whose nightmares come in the daytime, who will never eat anything, who have never seen a dentist, <clears throat> who aren't spoiled by anybody, who go to bed hungry and who cry themselves to sleep, who live and move but have no being. We pray for children who want to be cared for and for those who must be cared for and for those we never give up on and for those who don't get a second chance. And we pray for those who will grab the hand of anybody kind enough to offer it. Please offer your hands to them so that no child is left behind <clears throat> because we did not act. Amen. Any questions? In your bulletin, we also put in... Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I can borrow that for mm -hmm. a second. This thing here, you can take home. It has some of the things we talked about. It talks about the Clinton Bill, but the principles in the bulletin apply to everything that we do. So the um, you know the, the next you know when the next meeting of audit is or is that the date that's the date's been set to I will have it here. So uh, anyway, looking forward to anybody that wants to help out with that. Uh, this should be a great project. It wasn't women's bill last year in Regina. Yeah, hundred women built a house. They had to hire a few men, but basically the hundred women financed and built the house. So we're hoping something like that will happen in the region. Thanks for letting us uh, present to you. We hope we've answered some of your questions about Habitat. And we welcome Jim and Melissa to the Habitat family. Thank you. A quick question. Uh, is it too late to donate to help reduce Jim and Melissa's mortgage? Or where's that at right now? Just, I'll, I'll try and answer that if you can. Jim and Melissa's mortgage is set by the real value of the house. Donations will not change that. However, we still owe about $50,000 on this house. We still have to raise the money to finish paying for the lot and to pay for materials. So your donations will help greatly in that way. And we will not be able to start the Godrich house until this one is totally paid for. That's part of our rule. Any other questions? Thanks again. Appreciate what you do.